give us the chaos, though. You know he's tired, but he just keeps throwing. Hey, you know, you can't knock everybody out, man, so you just got to make adjustments and just keep going through the fire and give it your all, and that's just what I did. Chaos, the Ox Fighter! Nine and oh now for Piera Rodriguez. Push myself really hard in this camp. I'm ready, and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for, for my future in this company. Piera, La Piera Rodriguez! Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> Listen to me, we're at it. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Uh, young Matthew and myself today uh, will be joined by Chaos Williams making his first appearance on the show. And also, uh, Piera Rodriguez making, I believe, her first appearance on the show. And Chaos has fought in May of 23, May of 22, and now May of 24. And um, Piera's coming off that controversial armbar uh, to Jillian Robertson. So a lot to cover today, Matt. How many, um, how many people you know named Chaos? I'm trying to think. Well, he spells it with a K. I know six who spell it with a C. Now you're being silly. You don't know anybody, none of us know anybody named Chaos. I want to know, um, I don't know what his parents were thinking, honestly. Did they I, know bet, I bet his parents didn't give him that nickname. Well, it's not a nickname. Wait, is that his nickname? Of course, yeah. It's just what's his name was Chaos. What's his first name? It begins with a K. Um, <laughs> I forget. Hold on. Chaos Williams. That's his name. Uh, Outfit. No, it's Kalen. His real name is Kalen. His real name is Kalen. So why does it say Chaos? Then that's, that's, probably his, that's the name he goes by. No, but it says it right here. Chaos Williams. Does everybody just call him Chaos? Yeah. It's like his, yeah, it's what he goes by. Well, if it's his nickname, why is it written as his name on the well, show? Well, it's like if it was Hulk Hogan was coming on, we wouldn't say Terry Balea or whatever his name is. We would say, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm saying like he, everyone probably calls him that. It's probably what his name in life is now, but it's not his birth name. All right. You know what? My bad. Hey, welcome to UFC Unfiltered. It <laughs> happens. We all make mistakes. Well, I mean, um, I'm reading his name here. It says chaos, so I'm not really making a mistake. That's a great point. Chaos um, is in the waiting room. Well, let's get to it. What a way to start the show, huh? Yeah. I mean, let's bring him in. I should have let you ask the question. Yeah, but we were listening. Sometimes you get off to a jog, but you got to start with a little, you know, a little baby step. A trip. Yeah, a trip. But that was a trip. The starter coming off, and we just, we fell on top of each other at the starting game. Let's go. Hey, man. Let's go. I'm ready. Something tells me that Chaos Williams is a Lakers fan. What's up? I can hear y'all now. Yes, sir. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> uh, what is the giveaway with the? Is it the uh, the jersey or the uh, the cat? What do we? Get? Mama mentality, man. You know the the the, the, the jersey. Mamba, the Mamba mentality. Yeah, what is Mamba yeah. mentality? Man, you know it's just Kobe Bryant, man. Some Kobe, that, some Kobe came up with. You know, he he went to that ultra ego. When it was okay. like, yeah, when it was like game time, you know, crunch time. I stopped watching the NBA years. I was a Laker fan too, and I would watch. I just liked Kareem because I saw him in an airplane, and then I was yeah. walking through a store and I saw him playing basketball. I'm like, oh, I love this guy. Um, yeah. So I was a fan for a long time, but I think even by Kobe's era, I really I wasn't watching that much anymore. Do you go to games? No, I ain't, I ain't been in a uh, Laker game, but I've been to a lot of Detroit Pistons games though. They, that was one of my last memories. It was uh, Kareem's last uh, game as a Laker was a four-game sweep to the Pistons. And I, I, I want to say 87 or 88, where they had won in game, seven games the, the year before, and then Detroit really uh, they really put a hurt on L.A. that year. Very yeah. unpleasant. Hey, Jimmy, KS wasn't alive back then, you old friend. Right, man. I was, I was thinking, man, that's back in the day. <laughs> I'm only, right. That's I was 89. Back in the day. But still, as a Laker fan, you still care about the Lake. Like you know, yeah, if, yeah, even the if you, in the history, sure, hey. Yankee fans like Babe Ruth, even though they weren't alive. You're right. You're right, yeah. Jimmy. Tell us the last time you saw Magic Johnson play. I wanna. Mm -hmm. 
I um, like my, my thing with, with basketball, my favorite memory has nothing to do with basketball. And this is old school. It was yes. Kareem Abdul Jabbar fighting Bruce Lee, doing a front kick to do you know about that, Chaos? Yeah, I know about that. All right. Well, why would I see this? I'm saying like you <laughs> wouldn't about know that. about that. You're a damn cage fighter. Of course you should know about that. Hey, Chaos, is it true you got you found is this you found your calling for fighting by knocking somebody out in a street fight? Did I read that right? You read that right. You read it right. And it was it, it really wasn't even me, man. It was somebody else like that's what that's how I did it. But somebody else told me, like, man, that like I had the potential, man. They was just like, man, bro, like you got a lot of you got a lot of uh, like you got a lot of potential, man. Like you can make a lot of money doing that. And I kind of just did it to get my mind into something positive. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, man, let me let me put my mind into something positive, man. I just fell in love with it, man. And I just now it's just it's just uh I just love to continue pursuit of growth. You know what I mean? Just being a better mixed martial artist, just being a, you know, I'm just a sponge to the game. How 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 old were you when you first got into the arts, and uh, what did you get into? As as uh, I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I was nineteen. Oh shoot! Nice. Yeah, I was nineteen. Yeah. So tell me the first day walking into that school. Did you know somebody that went there? Did you see it? Did somebody? Uh, say no, it? I knew, it was my wrestling coach, man. It was my wrestling coach. I had a short little uh, wrestling career in high school, not not long, because I ended up getting, you know, what I'm saying I ended up getting in trouble and stuff, but. uh uh, one of my teachers, like one of my teachers, like, cause you know, one of my teachers was pretty much told me like he was plugged in with the wrestling coach. He and he he do it the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So he talked to me about it and uh, he kind of just plugged me in with him. And from there it was just it was just history. The guy you knocked out was that a guy you knew? Was it a guy you ever saw again, or was it just a, a random thing that happens? No, it was it was a guy. It was a guy that I knew, man. I can't remember exactly when. Uh, I mean, it was a couple instances that I knocked a couple people out, but it was one that, uh, yeah, we was beefed out. You know, it was it was on some it was on some like some street stuff, man. We was beefed out, and yeah, that was that situation. But the first time, like, I knocked somebody out, I was fourteen. But like the last time, which really got me into it, I was eighteen, and somebody that's the one that they was like, that's still on YouTube, matter of fact. But that was the one that they was pretty much like, man, like, bro, like you got you got you got something special here, man. You just need to really uh put it into something positive and really like um you know just get more technical with it true man because yes yeah, i'm sorry jimmy like you know from you're talking about some, some fighting in the streets the other tough guys it's listen it's either they go one route or the other they continue that in the mm -hmm. street you know where that ends up some guys choose the military yep. they go military yeah other guys they like to fight in a cage so isn't it great that they made this a sport that you're able to Absolutely. exercise your demons in a positive way? Absolutely. What uh, what was it that turned it around for you? Because I, I know there was a time where you had you there was you were incarcerated. Does, it, did that stop you and go wait this this is not the direction I can go in? Because I, I always love guys yeah. who go through that young and then you see you come out the other side of it and and, uh, and just you know everything is going in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much what it was, man. Like I was kind of just going down the wrong path, man. I was hustling, you know, and uh, you know, just trying to just coming, you know, just trying to just trying to make a way, and uh, that's pretty much what happened, man. I was in the streets and stuff, and after I got out of jail, like after I got out of jail, like it really hit me, man, because I got I got out of jail. I went to jail like twice by the time I was eighteen, so that second time it really hit me, man. Like you know, I could like I could be like it could have been way worse, you know. And I was like, man, like out of between 16 and 18, like I was locked up for 18 months. So it was just like, it was just like, man, like you really, you really, I really cherished my time. You know what I mean? I, I, I kind of matured and it was just like, man, like you, you see the value of your time, man. I mean, health is number one, but uh, time, like time is important too. So I felt like, man, ain't nothing like more important than that time. So as I was sitting in there and I was really thinking about my time, I was like, man, like, I can't I can't keep going down the wrong path doing this or doing that. So when I did get out, uh somebody that they seen that fight that was on YouTube, they told me, like, man, bro, like you got a lot of potential to do this, man. I'm telling you, get up with such and such and such and such. And man, just start doing that, man. And that's just where it was, man. Now I jumped into it with some blind faith back in the day, just started training, and now I got people all over the world knowing me. And when you you said something about like your time is so valuable. 
Like when, when, when your freedom is taken away, like I know you know it because you're there. What is the thing that makes you realize like, wow, it's really gone? Like, is there something you're doing in your, besides the obvious, you know, you're yeah. in a place you can't leave, but is there a moment where you go, yeah. fuck, like it's really gone? Hell yeah. I mean, shit, shit. The main thing I would say, man, I mean, the women for one, yeah. uh, the food, uh, that's what you're thinking about the most. For, for me, it was, it was the women, the food. Uh, and just, you know what I'm saying, that freedom, man, being told what to do, when to get up, when to go to sleep, you know, stuff like that, man. And it was just like, nah, man, like, and as time just going by, you just getting older, spending birthdays in there, spending holidays in there. And it was just like, yeah, that's, it, it just hit, it just hit you different. You know what I mean? Like, how does the day go by? You're reading books, you're working out. You're yeah, doing... I was, I was, I was pretty much keeping my mind busy, man. I was reading books, man. I'm a, I'm a reader, man. Like I was a speed reader. Like I used to read all them Harry Potter books and stuff. Like, I was a student. I was a student athlete as well. So, you know what I mean? Like, even though, like, like I did get in trouble, like, I was book smart as well. Like, I was a student athlete. I ran track, played basketball, football, all of that. You know, and then, like I said, I wrestled one year, too, but I ended up getting incarcerated that year. But, uh, I, uh, like, I was reading books, man. I used to always love to read, man. Like, I read them thick-ass Harry Potter books and within, like, under a week. Because I just be reading them all day. Yeah, so when I, when I was, like, locked up, I'd just be reading mad books, man. I'd just be reading mad books and just working out. And just pretty much just um just 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 feeding my mind and just teaching myself certain things. Like I'll be reading a dictionary, just looking up certain words. And uh, do does it teach you to like? Oh, oh sorry, Matt. No, I was gonna say, man. Uh, do you like the movies as well with the Harry Potter or no? I mean, I did, man. But they was making so many of them. Like I said, that's when I was younger, man. That's back when I was like to middle school to high school, back when yeah. they was coming out. But yeah, I liked all that stuff back then. But now, you know, I don't really pay too much attention to that, man. You know, we got real life going on, so I'm more focused on like trying to build wealth and, you know, just 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 just, just you know, learning more about uh, just getting better in my craft and just getting better like as far as in life. Did that experience help you at all with managing? Like, cause, you know, fighting is so such a very stressful way to make a living. And yeah. does it help you at all? Like, I'm sure in those moments when you're locked up, you want there's a panic that sets in, or just an anxiousness, or and then you have to calm that. You have to because you can't do anything. Does it give you any of those coping skills where, no matter what happens now, I mean, you've already dealt with something that is such a high level of stress. You've kind of learned how to. Do you know what I mean? Am I, I don't know if I'm asking that right, but did it did it teach you any of that stuff on how to handle things that are just unpleasant or stressful? I mean, absolutely, man. Uh life in the general you know uh all the trials and tribulations everything that i've been through including getting incarcerated it kind of just it kind of just taught me uh a lot of stuff man but it just made me more grateful too you know what i mean and uh just being without as well just coming from where i come from and you know what i mean going through everything that i've been through it just made me more grateful for the th you know what i'm saying for life and just having everything in general because like I always told people around me and just myself like you know it could always be worse you know, even if I was to get 18 months or even if I was to get a year or two years or whatever, like it's people that's doing 20 years or, you know, even if I did, even if I was short on a bill or something, it's people that don't even have a home. Or even if, if even if the car was having this problem, it's people that don't even have a car, don't have no legs. So that's why I just I just kind of put that into my mind. Like, you know, it could always be uh, it could always be worse. And, yeah, um, you know, I, I, yeah, I just I just always stay positive, man, and count my blessings through life and uh. Just focus on the positive, man, and then and, and just keep growing. Shit, yeah, man. The yeah. glass is always half full. I seen that you you came up on the uh the Michigan regional MMA scene with Jamal Hill. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. We was coming up together. And now look at you both. Isn't that great, man? Like you see somebody on the on the scene with you, now you're both in the big leagues. Hell yeah. Shit, man. Oh, there that. it is. Yeah. Well, how long ago is that? That was right before he won the belt, man. I pulled up to his house. We was chilling, you know what I mean? We was just talking about the fight right before he uh, went out to Brazil, you know? And, uh, you, you know, it's funny. Uh, you, you've only – your two losses uh, 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 in the last few years, I mean, they're both really good fighters, Randy Brown and uh, Michelle Pajeda. And I wanted to – how hard is Michelle Pajeda to prepare, prepare for? Because he's got such unusual movement, um, and, he, and he's, again, sometimes wastes energy, it seems, but he's just mm -hmm. so – odd uh was he a difficult guy to get ready for i mean he really wasn't man i feel like i feel like shoot to him you should ask him that question i think i was a difficult guy for him to get ready for you know you see he didn't fight me like everybody else you know he yeah. didn't fight me like everybody else man but he definitely i give him i get hats off to him man he's super uh athletic man you know what i'm saying and he do he, you know what i'm saying and whatever style he coming with like it was a little different you know it was a little different man but i mean 
that was a fun fight, man. I feel like that fight was kind of close, man. I feel like I won that fight for real, though, man. It was close, man, but I feel like I won that fight. I watched it over and over again, man. You know what I mean? I, I take my wins and my losses like a man, though. You know, I keep it pushing, but... And you watch the losses. Some some guys have a hard time watching you, but do you will you wait a while to watch a loss or do you just like rip the band-aid off, get in quick, or do you give yourself I get, a couple I, get, I, get, I, I, I watch it right back, man. You know, I watch it right back, man. You know, I'm uh you know, even in even in even in the W, you know, I never admired my work too long. And I look yeah. at it like, dang, what can I could have did better, man? Or if he caught me with this, man, like I can't get caught with that. Or you know, like I'd be like, Okay, or or it might have been something nice, like let me try that. You know, so it's just like I'm always just studying myself as well, man. Like I'm, I'm like they always say you could be your own best critic, your own, you know what I mean, like nightmares. So I just like always looking at the good and the bad. Yeah, an honest assessment of of what was right and what needs some work. Yeah, we got the co-main event, man. That's yeah. exciting. Colston, yeah. how do you like Colston as a dance partner? Uh, man, yeah, you know I mean, I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it, man. Uh, pretty good, solid fighter, you know, and uh, I feel like. When you go against the tough fighters, man, it always makes the victory even better. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good, uh, it's gonna be a good test. You know, and uh, I'm ready to do what I got to do to get that W. And, and uh, obviously, you're you're feeling healthy because it, it's funny. It's funny. You fought May of 22, May of 23, May of 24. Was there something that was nagging you or kept c coming up for you? No, nah, man. You know, it's it's just like I was saying. It's I like to. Mentally, man, I like to make sure everything good, man. Like physically, mentally, emotionally, like financially, I like all everything to be in motion and just like kind of just fall in tune because, you know, like when I'm in there, I like to be 110%. So it's never no what if or if I did that or, you know, like if that's making sense. Like I try to make sure everything is all, all intact. Right, you want when you go into it, you want to go. Okay, the, it's the time is right, and I know it's right, and I feel it. Right. Yeah, man, like this serious. I mean, I done seen some. I done seen some stuff. You know what I mean? So when I go in there, like I'm the type of fighter. When I go in there, like I'm putting my all into it. So like I don't go into the fight and thinking that it's gonna last. Like I go into the fight and think like, man, if this dude slipping or if he make a mistake, like I'm a like I'm gonna take his soul from his body. Or I'm gonna put his lights out or like I'm gonna hurt this dude. So just how I think like that, you know, I'm not bulletproof. So I'm like, shoot, they could do the same to me. So I got to make sure I'm all the way, all the way good. You know what I'm saying? I can't be over here worrying about this or worrying about that or arguing with this person or none of that. Yeah. Like I always got everything got to be like straight, uh, tunnel vision focus. And let's go get this bag. That's that's my mindset. You know, week of the fight, man, there was some old school fighters. I remember there's a certain one that used to read serial killer, serial killer books and stuff what? like that. What do you like to do? You watch it. I used to watch like movies like Three Hundred and Brave Heart. Just uh, get me, yeah. get me throw in Rocky. Uh what, a week in a fight. Do you do anything to keep you channeled in or? Uh, uh shoot, man. I mean, yeah, I would say pretty much, man. I just really um, I listen to like I listen to more like motivational stuff. You know what I mean? Just keep my mind at peace. Uh, I look at you know some of some 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 of the knockouts. I like watching fights during fight week, you know, just kind of get me pumped up, keep me in that zone, and just stay working, man. Just be working out for real, just stay busy, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me, man. I don't really got. Oh yeah, I go by the water as well sometimes. You know what I mean? Sometimes I just go meditate in the graveyard sometimes too, man, and just think like you know like I gotta I gotta put it all out there, man, because one day I'm gonna be here and uh, I don't want to leave nothing out there man you know what i mean so that's, that's something graveyard Grass. Yeah. That's, that's that's spooky graveyard. man are, are you do you get out do you go only during the day will you go at night and does it make does it freak you out a little bit i go more i'll go more in the day i go more in the day you know i mean i run more at night like sometimes i'll go run at night sometimes but it, it's more like a day it's more like a day uh thing for me though but it doesn't make you uncomfortable to be in a graveyard you, like you don't i mean we we know they're all dead but it's still a weird place to be you're right. okay there. <laughs> No, not really, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm different, man. So, you know, how my mind operate, you know. Sometimes people say, like, people would be like, think outside the box, man. How my mind operate, I don't even see a box, you know what I mean? So I'm just different, man. I don't know. It's hard to explain. And uh, Matt was, and I were talking before the show, too. Uh, the nickname Chaos, how did you get that? Was it was there somebody in particular or did gave it to you or did it just kind of grow in the neighborhood? No, nah, it, was, it was somebody that gave it to me, man. It was one of my homies. I was uh I was in the hood, man. It was crazy, man. How I got it, man. If y'all want the truth, it was funny, yeah. man. Like, yes. Crazy. So I was like, like before I knocked the dude out at fourteen, man. Like it was like 
it was like this side versus this side. So it was like, you know, this hood versus this hood and everybody outside. Probably we like on some warriors type situation back in the day, man. And it was like before the before like the iPhones, man, it's probably like the iPhone one or two was out. And Facebook wasn't even popping like that. So people was still fighting when I was down south, man. So pretty much it was just like a this side versus that side. Everybody fighting, man. It was probably like 30, 40 people just fighting. And um, like I hit somebody with a bottle, bloop. I hit somebody with a goose bottle. And then and then uh my, my people, they was just like, man, we gotta we gotta come up with something, man. Like you you causing all this chaos around here, man, all this ruckus, man. And they was like, about to just start calling you chaos, man. So I just kind of <laughs> took that and ran with it, man. And uh Shoot, I mean, they've been calling me that, and then, I mean, that's just something that everybody been calling me since then, and it just stuck with me. But I turned all that negative chaos to positive chaos. So yeah, you're in the right job. I mean, you you could not have picked a more perfect profession because not only if people want to see it, you're really good at it. Um, this is great. Congrats on the co-main. Uh, yeah, it's I'm ready to show out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this fight a lot. We're glad that you're fighting again, and thanks for coming on, man. It was really uh, no you're a really interesting guy and a great fighter. So it's good talking. Appreciate y'all for having me. All right, okay. chaos. Thank man. you, Can't sir. To watch you. All right. Yep. Yep. Take we'll care, man. Take care. That's fun, man. I like chaos. I do too. And Matt, sorry, Edson Barbosa against Lerone Murphy is the main event. And I, I love Barbosa. I love those just thundering leg kicks. You know, I'm a big Edson fan, so looking forward to this a lot. And it's on May the 18th, which is this Saturday in Vegas, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, ESPN Plus. And uh, also 7 p.m. That's the prelims. 7 p.m. Uh, ESPN Plus is the main card. Can I can I say something? Yes, sir. Because um. I don't know if you're aware. We have new listeners all the time. Yes, we do. You know, the same guys that and girls and, and people that were listening a year ago. You know, there's new ones now is what I'm saying. Sure. So you brought up the main event. And you brought up a warrior by the name of Edson Barboza. So for all our all our all I'm having technical issues. New you just you just you can keep that off because I know you still hear me. I just want to say that. <laughs> you know where I'm going. I know. Only because of this. Only because he kicks so well. And, he, and he's so dynamic. Barboza. Barboza. It's in Barboza. You're only a kick away. Jimmy. Barboza. Barboza. It's in. Barboza. <sighs> so anyway, funny you know, as you're doing that, your family is putting their stuff in a moving truck. Oh yeah, yeah, they don't, <laughs> they, 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 they care, they don't care for that. They don't but care for the thing. Jimmy, my thing is Ed's in Barboza. When I say he's only a kick away, it's not just the song. Have you seen this man kick? Yes, I love it. I really do. He's got some dynamic finishes, man. He takes the legs out. He does the. Back spinning heel to your noggin. Yes, he does. What's he done in his last couple of? Uh, I mean, let me check That's out look, Edson's. Look, it's right on the sheet. Yo, it's getting almost cornhole weather, Jimmy. Keep it clean. Cornhole's the game when you throw the thing in the. Oh, uh, apologies. I was actually ready to say something else. I'm glad you clarified. <laughs> uh, his last two wins against uh, Sadiq Youssef and Billy uh, Billy Q lost to Bryce and Giga uh, uh, TKO on a decision. Yeah, he's looked good. Um, he had gone for three losses, and he's uh, four and two in his last six. So whatever it is, he seems to have straightened out. Whatever wow. was, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, hurting him. Dumbo Garumba. What's that? Oh, Dumbo. Dumbo. Oh, he's up. I think he's in the featured battle. Am I correct? Let me go back to that. Yeah, he's fighting uh, Ramiz. Rahama Hodge. That's not bad. I said that right? Um, uh, yes, you did. Brian Hodge. Thank you. That's what I said. Um, hey, man. I, I want to see what's up also with Adrian Yanez and uh, Vinicius uh, Salvador. They're both coming off two losses. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this much. Adrian Yanez is too good to be coming off two losses in a sense where. Yeah, he is. You know, he, he, right before that. 
he he got a, a knockout, and before that, he was on a, a, a few wins right before that, and, and uh, you know, actually, those are his only two losses. O- only two losses in the UFC, yeah. yeah. And, and, they, and look, it was Defont and Martinez too. So they were there was two great fighters. It's true, but we gotta we got. I want to see Adrian come back. Everybody likes a comeback. Honestly, yeah, uh, well, people do. Yes, the Ultimate Fighter season four, the comeback. I meant. So, oh, that, and, and by really the way, as far as straightening Matt and writing the ship or whatever you want to call it, who has done a more amazing job of that than Max Holloway? Like, oh. I mean, he again, he's always was good, but it looked like he had dropped a few fights. Um, and it looked like, all right, well, maybe Max, um, you know, again, he's had so many fights, maybe, maybe he's just a little beyond uh, his prime. And then you see what he's done, it's been fucking amazing. Dropped a few fights. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I'm looking at our picks now, Jimmy. Yes, sir. The deal. Now, you have I like the pictures. You, I don't. You look like a little young boy, and I look like a bloated blob. I don't know what that is. I look like a <laughs> He's won like, three straight. That's it. And he's this won is- literally five out of six, man. He always lost decision to Volkanovsky. It was a very, very definitive win for uh, Volkanovsky, though. Yeah, but the one before that wasn't. Not to be like that. I oh, know. no, you're right. You're 100% right. I, I, I mean, I almost would submit that he had won the first two fights. I, I mean, I, I have to watch them again, but I remember after the first fight thinking uh, Max won it. Max, whatever Max wants, give Max after his last performance. It's incredible, yeah. That's that. That's one for the books. Probably the best knockout ever. Um, I don't agree best knockout ever. It was so dramatic. Yeah. I think Leon Edwards, Kamara Usman was one of the best I've ever seen because – it was a fifth round championship deciding knockout in a fight he was losing probably four rounds or three rounds to one at least. If I remember, I just don't remember. But and it was against Usman again. Not that Gaethje is not, but Gaethje was losing that fight. Usman looked unbelievable, sense, and then Leon got good. screamed at and fucking stop feeling sorry for yourself. And he comes I love out. That. No, that, that to me is that to me was the best one. But to this one is a it hits a little differently because he didn't have to take that risk. That's so right, he didn't that on that. You know, hey man, he's winning. He doesn't have to sit there in the fire, and he did with so, Gaethje. He stood there, and the, yeah, which was crazy. You're right, Jimmy. I want to talk about uh, Jake, the producer, our favorite ginger. He. He's looking out for you. He's the only he's ginger right now. This is what he's saying. He's basically saying that I know my pick. So when we start in the pick, I choose my pick, and you kind of want to go against me. And that is the reason that you're doing so miserable in the picks, where it's 15 wins and set 27 losses, and yep. me being quite the opposite, which is 29 and 13, which is a very, very nice score. Very so, lucky record, yes. Yeah, that's a nice record. But you know what, Jimmy? This is what I'm going to do. What? When we pick, I'm going to let you pick first. I don't automatically have to pick against you. You choose to. No, I choose to, which is my fault. So you can still pick first. I have to go with it. There's times. I love the picture. I love the pictures of us. I don't like that picture. (laughs) You can't. It's terrible. And I look like the blob. I look like, (laughs) that's not me. Look at him now, Jimmy. I'll show you my ears. Look at this. That guy yes. looks like a fat boss, like from like a, a mob movie. Or yeah. Hey, being the cannoli over. Yeah. Oh my goodness, do I look good now compared to that. Ooh. You look a lot better, yeah. Jimmy. Gluten free. You know? Gluten free. I'm staying away from the gluten. Right. I'm staying away from wheat. Okay. They're saying they think that's your driver's license. I that's your driver's license. It is. It's my driver's license, my first one when I was nineteen. Well, how cute. Yeah. Uh, so hey, Jimmy. Uh, we, we can talk more fights for the, the picks and stuff. On, uh, we'll do right, the I main think- and co-main. Why don't we do the main and co-main? Um, I was to say let's do that Wednesday, but it is Wednesday. Oh, today's Wednesday. Yeah, it's not Monday. Are you ready? Um, yeah, you can pick, and I, I'll pick with you if I have to. So we'll just do the co-main and main. No, how about you pick first? I am uh, not going against Edson. Um, I am happy with what he's been doing. Uh, I'm going to take him in the decision over Murphy. Um, Murphy's last two, uh, three of his last five fights have been decision. Uh, although he did uh, have a couple of knockouts, but again, they were not against Edson Barboza. So I am going to take, and Barboza also has so much more, I believe, five round experience. I don't know if this is Murphy's first main event i'm thinking it is 
Um, so he may be doing some more press. I, I don't know how it will affect him, but Barbosa has been there multiple times. Uh, so I'm going to take Edson, uh, again, by decision. I think that he, those last couple of rounds, his experience. Man, he has experience. Now, you know, Lerone Murphy, he's undefeated in the UFC. Yes, he is, 5-0. and He's 5-0 and in the UFC. He's doing something right. Let me look at the ages here. How old is he? He's 32. Edson's Edson. 38. Oh, he is 38. Yep. Mm. Now, listen. I'm not just doing this for you. But, you know, they're seeing something to put this guy in the main event, Murphy. They're, they're they are. Something. That's right. You know? And you know what? What, buddy? I see it, too. Look at me. Yep. I don't, don't, don't look at me like that. Why? Listen, I, mean, I was up close to the screen. Oh. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Murphy. See, when did you get that knockout? You got a couple of knockouts. One in the first round. One's in the, in the second round. I'm going to say third round knockout Murphy. I know it's cr- – listen to me. I know you're looking at me and you're going, what are you – are you doing this because you you feel bad for me with the big – no, I'm not. All right, Jimmy? All right. I mean, look, if you think Barbosa – I know he's 38, Barbosa? but he is number 12. Number, He's right number 12. I know how good he is. Yeah. You gotta tell me how good he is. I love Edson Barbosa. But – I think you 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 know you took that first pick. I can tell you're getting a little cocky, and I'm going to say Leron Murphy. Leron, Leron Murphy's going to win. Okay, All right, I'm saying that. Um, now chaos. Oh, sorry, oh, okay. apologies. No, 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 no. I'm just talking shit. Comain Charleston Harris, uh, who is four one UFC and chaos five two in the UFC fourteen three overall. But again, he lost to Brown split decision. Michelle Pajeda, a decision, so he has not been stopped. Um, and Harris has lost a knockout uh, to uh, Rachmanov. Six, he's a little younger, Case a little longer. Uh, I'm taking Chaos. Good. And I'm taking him in the second. I'll take... I'll take uh, chaos in the first. I think it's going to be a banger. Okay. Do I have to go against you? Not at all. Jimmy. Not at all. I'm going with chaos in the first. I think it's going to be chaos. You might be right. I mean, he seems like his head's in a great place. Yeah. Yeah. You might Uh, bump into yesterday. I was uh, at Henzo's and I bumped into Iron Mike Tyson. What's he doing there? Uh, I guess he had been doing something locally and then just came in to hit pads. Uh, and nobody was up there with him. It was just him and his trainers. But uh, they said, you, I, I came in when he was done. He was already, he was just downstairs talking to people. But they said you could really hear it <laughs> when he's hitting pads. Uh, it, it was like when Tom Aspinall was downstairs kicking and I was upstairs and you could just hear these fucking baseball bat kicks to the pads. Yeah. I imagine that's what Tyson Sounded you know, like, but he looked really good, man. He looked solid. Like he does not look like he's fifty-seven years old. I think people should just let people do what they want to do. I mean, you know what I mean, Jimmy. I've been thinking more and more about it. Like, oh, well, what about his safety? Or he's older. Yeah, yeah but guess what? You know what? What is he? Fifty-seven. Like like, Fifty-eight well, for the fight. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, what if he does nothing now, and then in twelve years from now, he starts developing? Parkinson's and this and that and well maybe you should get it in now then maybe that maybe that is the right way to live like in other words as long as you're well trained and well prepared do you know live your life like I'm no it is Jimmy as we get older you're seeing where the finish line is it's not pretty there's guys out there that I'm not saying go out and be a lunatic but yeah like Ralphie Sarah he hasn't ever done anything he wasn't a big drinker or smoker or this or that Nothing, no, not big any vices. You know, he used to train a lot. I'm talking about my father. Yeah. And uh, now, you know, he just had a double bypass. Uh, you know, he stopped moving at some point as far as with his whole activity. Yeah. And next thing you know, you just, well, you know, almost tapping out. 
You know, and now he's talking the whole time walking. You got to see a neurologist and uh, Parkinson's. It's like he's starting a motorcycle. Jimmy, we got to enjoy ourselves. You understand? Yeah, I, I think when people express concern, though, oh, uh, as that falls on your dick. Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> they just, you know, people like Mike so much. And with fighters, and we'll bring our next guest in just a moment. With fighters, a lot of times fighters need other people to tell them because fighters are tough. Like fighters will do things probably be, like that yeah. are really bad for them because I, fighters I are tough one people. Thing, it's one thing if it's like Joe Rogan talking to to Brendan uh, Schaub. Schaub, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where it's like, all right, but you're a buddy of mine. You're getting knocked unconscious. You don't really have a shot of getting the title. Let's talk. Let's have an intervention. But it's another Mike Tyson hasn't taken a punch in how long, really? I mean, you think that fight with Holyfield did any damage to him? Nah, man. So let him. Hey, what's better, Mike Tyson like this, or go watch The Hangover when he's like how much out of weight and he's had drug problems? I mean, this is great for him. Look, I'm happy for him because it's a huge payday for him. I like him so much. I like him personally a lot. So um, I want to see him win because I love Mike. But I also look when you like somebody. Obviously, nobody wants to see somebody get hurt. Because yeah. it is a concern when somebody's in their 50s, no matter how tough they are or how skilled they are, you just want to make sure that they, they don't get hurt. But again, the power is the last thing to go. And I'm sure Mike Tyson at his 50s uh, punches harder than anybody Jake has faced who is in their 20s. Uh, exactly. And Darren Till is on the undercard, yes, against oh, Leo Cesar Chavez also. Jr. I'm sorry about Darren Till. He's, he's on that undercard. That's exciting. I like Darren Till. But I also want to get to know Pierre Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yes. Let's get her in here. Let's bring her in. Hello, how are you? Hello, very good, and you guys? Good, thank you. Very right. good. Nice, nice to meet you, Pira. Nice to meet you, too. So listen, now this is going to be your uh, fourth fight in the in the UFC. How exciting. Now, everything is going right. And then we had that last fight with that arm bar. Did we put that past us in a sense where it was a little controversial? Right? Yes, it was. So in a sense, though, that's got to make you feel like, all right, I lost, but I, I could have got out of that. or Like, you know what I mean? So it's not like I just got, it wasn't a permanent, like, yeah. I know she's better than me. How, how are you feeling after that? Well, at the beginning, I was super frustrated, of mm -hmm. course, because I was like, oh, "Man, I didn't tap. I didn't, I didn't do it verbalized or, or, or you know, physically." So, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I I watched the fight a million times, and I was like, "Okay, she was dominating. She was in a very hard position to get off." I knew I have one more escape to try, but. It was already like it was already like very trap. It, it was a bad situation for me. So I was like, you know, leave it to God. Everything happens for a reason. I have a lot of pride, you know, when I'm fighting. I don't feel pain. So uh, maybe if the referee wouldn't stop it on that moment, I would be, I would be going with my with my arm broken home, you know. So that would be a much more Fail to situation for me, yeah. you know. So, but at least I I lose, but I didn't get my arm in in a com compromised situation. What when you look at the fight too? Do you do you do you kind of say like, okay, I understand why the referee thought that because there's a moment where your hand hits the leg and then you start trying to push the leg off. And and I know when you're flailing around trying to get your hand in the right position, it might look like a tap, but it wasn't. So, but do you understand why Keith Peterson looked at that and said uh, why he thought it was a tap? Do you look at it and go, okay, I get why he thought that. Yeah, I, I re at the beginning, I didn't understand what happened, you know, so I was like, I never tap. And, and then I look at him and when I was getting fr up from the floor, I tell him I didn't tap. And then he told he told me verbal tap. And I was like, whoa, that's even that's even weird, you know, like more weird, because uh, if if you get confused by the hand situation, but now you're going to tell me it's a verbal tap? Uh, you can hear on the microphones, I never did a verbal tap. I never say anything. My 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 mouth was closed. So that was a little bit more annoying for me in that yeah. moment. Uh, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. 
I think that just make me work on my grappling the ten thousands more since that fight. So it's like whatever, man. It happens like this. I understand people get confused. This is a tough sport, um, and everything happened for a reason. I think that's just gonna make me better. Yeah, heck yeah, Pira. Listen, you know it's your first time on here. Uh, for the audience, you know, where did you grow up, and what was the first discipline you got into in the arts? I grew up in Venezuela in a very, very small town. I was just thinking about that. In my town, you didn't even have, we didn't even have uh, uh, theaters. So it's very, very small. We like, we didn't have like, uh, like a big mall or something like this. You know, it was, it's super small town. Um, So I grew up like this in Ciudad Ojeda is the name. Um, people didn't know about martial arts in that place at all. Maybe karate and and maybe boxing. So I started with boxing. But if you tell people jujitsu, they were like, "What? What is that?" You know. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> so I learned boxing for for the first discipline, and then when I get out of my country, then I start doing MMA and I start learning about MMA. But there, there was. No jujitsu, no wrestling. That doesn't exist in my in my town. What made Not you start today. training? What made you start training uh, in a small town? Did, was there anything that inspired you to do it? So yes, of course, I saw on the TV a lot of Ronda Rousey, you know, stuff. So uh, since I was very very little, uh, one of the people that comes to my house, uh, he likes to watch the WWE, you know, wow. stuff. So I was like, hey, this is kind of fun. And then I understand, then I learn a little bit about boxing. Then I start getting more curious and more curious about MMA. But it was when I moved to Panama that I could really try it for the first time. Because in Venezuela, in the place that I was born, there was there was no boxing. There was no MMA, just boxing. How was the uh, transition to the grappling and jujitsu and stuff like that? It was awful. <laughs> it was the worst experience in my life because I was I was a good boxing uh, fighter in that moment. And I have a friend that invited me to jujitsu. And I feel like a cockroach when you put it like this. <laughs> <I'm back. laughs> I was like, what, 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 what I'm doing right here? And then that day I noticed that it doesn't matter how hard you punch, you can get very like very dominated in a in a in a match you know if you don't know jujitsu so that was like super awkward but i started getting more and more curious about it and here i am <laughs> what made you go to panama why panama because it was closer to venezuela it was uh the first step to get out of venezuela you know uh it was easier in that moment for me to to get there because Venezuelan people have a lot of problem with uh, visa stuff in other in other countries. Sure. So in that moment, it was a little bit easier for me to move to Panama. So I take the first step and then I start going to other countries after that. Where, where are you living now? Panama? Or? No, I'm living in Las Vegas. Nice. Wow, good. Yeah. Yeah. Is that how you, Go ahead, Jimmy. Oh, no, no. I was going to say, was it a work visa you came on the first time for, for fighting or did you get into before that? Yeah, no, um, I came to the U.S. a long time ago, um, but it didn't work out. I came as a tourist, you know, so I was like, okay, I'm going to go as a tourist. I'm going to see how it is. But I was like, no, that's not the place for me right now. So I went to Spain, to other places, you know, to, to try to start because here it was like very hard for me to start from zero uh, coming from Venezuela. So I came back to the U.S. when I was, a, you know, a professional athlete. And then I came with a athlete visa that was like, OK, now is the right time to come back. You know, now I'm, I'm more ready for for what the U.S. brings to me, you know. Yeah. So now in Vegas, where are you training at the P.I.? I'm training at the P.I. and uh, at Strength Couture oh, and at Hybrid Jiu Jitsu, too. What do you think of Vegas as a home? Like, it, it's such a, there's so many temptations there. There's shows, there's great restaurants, there's gambling. Like, I would do so badly living there because I'm weak. So uh, how is it for you living there? 
I don't care. I, I, I just live, you know, I just go home, rest and go to the gym again. So for me, it's the same if I'm living here or I'm living in, in other places of the world. I just need to be close to the gym and have a good bed to rest. I don't care the rest. I don't have any temptations here. Uh, that world is, is very far away from my routine. So <clears throat> the only thing I do care is about the weather. And I think it's good. <laughs> Yes, you get plenty yeah. of sunshine there. I like the weather because it's not a it's not humid over there. It's just dry. Yeah. And it's I come not... from a very hot place. Yeah. So so here is is not it's not so bad for me, you know. Do you miss home? Do you miss Venezuela or, or are you kind of glad you don't live there? <laughs> it's kind of both. <laughs> uh -huh. I miss it, but I'm glad that I that I could get out of there in a good situation, in a better situation for my career, you know. Uh, of course, I miss my family, my my people, my friends. Uh, but I knew that I needed to get out of there to to grow in the sport. So I think it's it's good like it is right now. Now, here you seem very channeled in with the training and very disciplined. What do you like to do on a day off? Are you whether it's a hike or you something? I know there's active training, but what do you like to do away from training? Books, series you're watching on Netflix. Tell us. Yeah, well, normally I'm a I'm very obsessive person with training, so I train a lot. So in my rest day, I don't want to do anything. Like those active training, no. <laughs> no, I just want to be on my bed watching Netflix or, you know, go to the to the theaters or watch a show. I really like concerts, like music concerts. I like a lot of music. I used to play guitar before, so I really... I really like I, I really enjoy the um, the music area, you know. And what kind of con who have you seen in concert? Is there anybody that you like loved that you saw? Well, I, I go to a lot of concerts. The last one that I went, it was on LA for uh the well the last one that I love it, like I totally love it. It, it was in LA. Uh, the the band is called Rawayana. And it's from Venezuela. So I was in LA and they are from Venezuela and they did a concert in LA. So oh. I was like, whoa, I need to go there, you know. And the vibe was amazing. I love it. It was one of the best concerts I ever been. That's okay. nice. Well, but listen, the, the crazy about me is like I can enjoy heavy metal. I can enjoy reggae music. I can enjoy, you know, everything. Everything is like I just love music. And if you not like like country or something that doesn't bluegrass I, like, I mean i mean if you put country on my on my gym all day i'm gonna be like okay stop it but yeah. if you put a good country song i'm gonna enjoy it you know yeah. like uh there's no any 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 type of music that i really really dislike and uh you know carnal osi who you're fighting on saturday she's only lost three fights and one of those was uh 10 years ago to uh, amanda hibas when her first fight what are you expecting out of her, and how, how do you think you match up with her? I think um, I'm expecting from her, you know, the same that she does in every fight that is coming with heavy, heavy punches and and heavy low kicks. That's what she likes. That's her style, like more like kickboxing style. Uh, a lot of open uh, punches, a lot of hooks. Um but I don't know. I'm I'm ready for everything. I'm I really want her to give me her best because I'm ready to give my best, and I think that's gonna put on a great show. Well, look, um, congratulations on you know on uh, on getting you know nine and one. You've had a great career so far, and um, you know like John Jones's one loss was because of some weird technicality. So that type of stuff happens. Um, and, and good luck against uh, Ariani on on Saturday. It was really good talking to you, and you seem like you're in a great place mentally and you're ready thank you so much and just please put another referee on this one <laughs> all right, hey, all right. Listen, i can't on. wait hopefully you're not in an on ball you don't have to worry about that yeah 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 no no absolutely no i'm i'm working so hard to 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 don't get on those situations anymore you know but you know how it is this is a crazy sport and crazy things happening so i just want people to let me do my work if i and if i want to pull out i i believe me i'm gonna scream i'm gonna make it loud and i'm not gonna do something you know so subtle <laughs> Fair enough. yeah 
Fair enough, Warrior. Hey, we, we're looking forward to your fight. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you very much, uh, Piero Rodriguez. Thank you for coming on, and we will talk to you again. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I, I think so, too. So. She's a channeled in young lady. She definitely is, yeah. Um, you know well, what? Matt, I was Jimmy, by the way, listen. Uh, well, it's all in my head. I think about it over and over again. What? I keep thinking about you with him. It hurts so bad. That's Nelly and Tim McGraw from back in the day. You could throw that in YouTube if you want. It's an old. I'd rather movie. not. Well, I mean, well then I'll then if you then I'll let you know how it goes. No, I'd rather not, Nelly. No, well, it's getting late. Okay, I'll, I'll call you later. We'll do tonight that. at seven p.m. <laughs> Fat Black Pussycat. A bunch of stuff on the road. I got Idaho. I got Lexington, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio, Portland, Oregon. Um, Tempe, Arizona, San Diego, Tampa, Florida, a bunch of gigs. And uh, my wife and I have a new sword fight episode up now. And, um, you know, if you want to come see me tonight, 7 p.m., come see me tonight. You're so cool, Brewster. You know what that's from? That's from Fright Night. Oh, that's, no. that's a, that, not the new one. With Colin. It's not even new. That one's still 10 years old. But the one I did was from um, it's from the yeah. 80s. And what a, what a great movie. Uh, Jimmy. More fun times next week. Yes, this was fun. Let me plug the gigs, Matt. Barbosa Murphy, Saturday night, 4 p.m. Uh, uh, prelims, 7 p.m. main card. And um, Matt, Matt are you doing laundry on that thing or what? Yeah, Jimmy. Listen, love you, buddy. I love you too, Matt. Good see you soon. I'll see you soon, bro. Bye, folks. Nice.